Well, uh, I guess we could start by saying uh, congratulations to Monster of the Year. Yeah, that was a pity vote, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if you've talked much about it, but like, what are your overall thoughts about that? Uh, well, there are. I'll, I'll give you my most honest answer. There are two two things. I feel like I don't deserve to shine the shoes of some of the people that have been monster of the year before me. Right. And then a part of me felt like I should have won that shit a long time ago. <laughs> I think a lot of people agree with that statement right there, honestly. But that being said, everybody will answer saying that like awards are arbitrary and you know, you do it because you love it, which is so true. But you all, I mean, you, no matter how much of a, like a independent thinker you are or like a loner or whatever, you always want, you always seek the approval of your peers like at my core, I don't give a shit if people understand what I'm doing or like what I'm trying to do. Like I, I for sure am there to, to be the, I don't know, the best version of my character that I can be, or I'm, I'm always going to do me regardless of what uh, others think of me or want me to do. But yeah, I, I I'll also always have a chip on my shoulder. Like, or like a desperately seeking the approval of my peers, like, fuck, like, you know, it does feel nice to, I think my, what I think my love language is words of affirmation. So yeah, it always does. It feels nice to, to be recognized or just to have someone be like, Oh, that was sick. That's why I think the, uh, the thank you cards that they do like that management gives us is yeah. always cool. It's like, Oh shit, man. So I, I feel seen like, <laughs> like, thank you. So in that regard, even if it were five people that voted or, a majority of them or for whatever reason yeah it feels good to be like to finally achieve that i got monster of the year in, in boardwalk okay and then uh was that the that was the first zone you scared on before you went to ghost town right yeah it was only ever just boardwalk and ghost town right okay so you i, I mean, think it, oh, to achieve it on both though that's pretty cool yeah i think it was for different reasons though i think in boardwalk there was like uh Mm, it, it was it was a very like transitional time in boardwalk when i was there like a lot of the old blood was still there a lot of them were leaving and now you have all these like it it wasn't just like a transitional time for boardwalk it felt like kind of a transitional time for knots like there were a lot of people from my generation who were whether like whether they were maze monsters or not like stepping up now and being like okay you know it's now we got to shoot we got to fill these shoes right um, not all the old vets, not all the vets were gone, but it just felt like in boardwalk in particular, there was a moment where we had a lot of really good, like raw or like unshaped, like raw material. And then a lot of the, the old heads were kind of just like there, maybe they didn't necessarily give it. I'm not, I can't speak for them, but it felt from my perspective, it felt like a lot of people were just kind of like not really wanting to step into a leadership role. Mm -hmm. And there's always just like this attitude at knots of like, well, I've been here. You have to respect me. But it's like, but if you're not respecting people or if you're not bringing anything creative or encouraging to the table, then you don't get points just for existing. Like get the right. fuck out of here. Yeah. For so, real. so there were people just kind of taking up space and there were a lot of, of people with no direction, but they like really wanted to make that zone a thing. Not that it wasn't, but you know, there it was like ghost town and camp were always number one and number two right and boardwalk was always for better for better or worse the red-headed stepchild <laughs> of quite, that park quite literally yeah <laughs> so it was just kind of like they left us to our own devices it felt like management was like yeah whatever they're gonna they're gonna they're boardwalk they're gonna do boardwalk shit and it was like it felt like long overdue to get some respect yeah and it's not like I was there for years. I, I wasn't like, you know, I did my first year just wanting to prove that I could be a, hold my own on streets. Right. But by the second year, I was like, fucking dude, we can. We can I don't know, we can make this something like more than what it is. So I think that maybe part of it would have been. Yeah, I was like. 
young and energetic and chaotic. And a lot of it probably had to do with the fact that I was like trying to rally the troops. Like, come on guys, like fucking, you don't have a character. Let's work on a character for you. And Hey, let's all go try this or let's do this. And so maybe I like unintentionally picked up the role of like the, the high school quarterback that year or, the king or whatever. Of the nerds, man, come on. Well, I, I just felt like I, I, I definitely, I, f- I definitely felt like I was playing a role in like encouraging people. Like, there yeah. were there were vets that were already there that were absolute murderers already. It was like Mark and Adam Roman, those guys. And Mark's still in the zone. Adam Roman has he went to management talent and then he moved on. But Mark uh Volger, he was there. <clears throat> and then Jim Tabor, Panhead, he was still there. A lot of really good vets were still there. But uh my first year in 2009. Um, a lot of it, that was like a transitional year. And then in 2010, all of a sudden it was like boardwalk was the zone that no one cared about. Then all of a sudden we had like 30 new people, like all of a sudden everybody wanted to be in boardwalk. And it was kind of like a undeniable thing that was happening. We we're like, Whoa, what the fuck? Like mm-hmm. our rookies were like Eric Saunders and Greg Daniels and AJ and a lot of the people that are in, in ghost town now, or like, working as techs now like everybody started in boardwalk yeah i mean aj we had aj on the show last week and he talked like that was one person he talked really we talked a lot about your character and you and whatnot and how much you meant to him and whatnot and and getting to get the opportunity to, to work with you and whatnot uh both in i don't know was he there when you were there with him in boardwalk right yeah yeah you guys he was in boardwalk. boardwalk yeah he was talking about the boardwalk days he was talking a little bit about the ghost town days um and how much you were a big influence on him um no oh. Well, that is a very, very nice thing to say. Yeah, he's a you, he's a good guy. I mean, he he really he really looked up to you, man, and he still does look up to you. I mean, he I mean, he was like it was just a dream come true for him to actually get to scare with you, you know, like especially going out to Ghost Town. Like he didn't know how this was gonna work out, and he he just grabbed the rope and ran with it, dude. I, mean, I love that. That's awesome. that's another thing about. There's another thing that like people have to acknowledge is even if you don't want people to. Uh, even if your objective is not for people to look up to you or to uh, emulate you or it, it's going to happen yeah. just by, by, by way of existing. Like maybe you think you're doing your podcast and you're not set, you're not trying to be an example or anything, but people are going to emulate that. They're going to be like, Oh, like I want to do like the Knights of horror. I want to do this. Like just by, by doing you, people are going to see that and they're going to want to, emulate that so to hear that there are people that like looked up to me as talent or whatever this is fucking cool and i guess like at the end of the day that's how you felt about certain monsters before you work there and i i maybe that's like the number one thing i would be at peace with like leaving behind is like oh so if i influence someone or if they had some sort of positive thought about me or working with me that's fucking killer Cause there were people that I definitely felt that way about. I felt privileged to work with some people before they left. So that's cool to hear. Oh man. Uh, talk to me now about the death character. Now I know over, over, you know, the years of knots that's been going on, there's been certain characters that have kind of been, uh, passed down to other people. Now, if someone were to come to you and have a, <coughs> like a legit conversation with you about taking over the mantle of that character and kind of redesigning it to their self, like their own thing, would you be okay with that? Not in a million years. Not in a million years. <laughs> I, I, I kind of figured that was going to be the answer, but I still wanted to hear it. And, and well, what's, I don't know, what's man. the reason? But you just have a lot of personal touch with that character? That You have a lot of personal, just too much of you or what? Too much of me might be a good a good uh a good way of putting it i feel like that's just an extension of me Mm -hmm. in some ways that relationship feels like too symbiotic i the only person i ever agreed to pass that character to was my oldest son jokingly goes well in in nine years i can work at knots and i can just do your character i was like go off like (laughs) so he so so only only immediate family have the the right to to do that no, I mean, that's not fair. If he if he sucked, I would tell him. <laughs> I beg, you got to do you, baby. You got to go do your own character. <laughs> so he's got he's got to he's got to earn your approval for that one right there. Then no, it's I don't know. It's not that. It's just that you know there are a lot of really good characters that Knots 
has already that are like not op yeah that other people have taken over and made their own like the bride is a great example i was fucking terrified of gene the original bride and terrified is not a word because there's not a lot of things that i'm afraid of but there was just something her vibe fucking sucked <laughs> you know what i mean like the, yeah. it, it, the much like gloria's vibe it, it's a vibe you know what i mean like gloria made that character her version of the bride is her version of the bride and it's not necessarily like she does her outright scares, but her vibe, like the eerie nature with which she just sort of traverses through the zone is what gets people. That's how Jean was just by being Jean. She would be doing Jean shit. And I was like, nah, <laughs> like, I don't want anything to do with that shit. <laughs> but and then we've had so many different versions. I mean, the goblin is a great example because, you know, the bride is still going to be the bride, but man, the goblin has been so many different things. Wade, the original goblin was just kind of like, you know, the first variation of the, like, like he was like the, the first class of like the badass street slider monsters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when you think of like people like Dieterman, you know what I mean? Like that's his graduating class, like dudes like Wade and Todd and all them. They're from like those, that first era like when like the first era of like badass ghost town sliders it's like the dog town of fucking sliding <laughs> yeah you know what i mean yeah. and it's not like you know it's not like it's not about whether wade was like a badass slider or not because sliding was different then yeah you know well, obviously it's especially a, with gear not being where it's at today you know it's like, oh yeah and just like the evolution of it maybe i mean oh my god my microphone thing um <laughs> you know they were just happy to slide it was a new thing and all you had to do was slide and i'm not taking anything away from that but just like it, it, it's like anything like but but those are the like when i think of the the first like badass ghost town monsters i think of dudes like beast or like uh you know i think of dudes like wade or todd and like um then it was Brendan Bain, Skidda. And, you know, I, I, I'm still friends with Brendan. I fucking love that dude. And <laughs> my favorite quality about him is like, he's going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. Like if he puts his mind to something, he's just going to do it. But he also does it in a like, a, like, he just doesn't give a fuck. Like the everything outside of what his objective is, is noise. If he's going to cause chaos, it, it doesn't, you know, it, he's just going to do him. Unlike right now, like he's a prick. He, he did, he does jujitsu. I've done jujitsu for years and that dude fucking worked me over. He's a fucking giant monster now. Like he's huge. Yeah. Dude, he's such a badass, but like, you know, he sets his mind to something and he just does it. And he's very intelligent and he's very funny without much effort. And, you know, his skitta was like a reflection of that. He just like showed up and did whatever the fuck he wanted. And people either hated him for it, which a lot of people did. Or they idolized him for it, which uh, I'd say a massive amount of people did, you know, through his like YouTube videos. There weren't a lot of dudes like kicking YouTube videos back then. Right. A lot of the monsters that we ended up having were working there because they saw Skid as videos. And then we get dudes after Brennan leaves, like Chris Gecko, who are like died in the wool character actors. Yeah. Like I remember seeing Gecko before he got the goblin face. And like he had, he was like this little alien thing. And I saw him at rope drop and I asked Spaz, I go, who the fuck is that? He goes, dude, it's one of our rookies, dude. He's fucking badass, huh? <laughs> I was like, man, that kid's incredible. And then they gave him the gecko face. And he's, he's to this day, I, I, every night that I work under the sign, I watch him and I watch Antho and I watch gecko fucking level people every <laughs> night. And I feel like, man, I'm just getting paid to watch this dude just murk people. And we would have like a good, you know, good communication. Like I would be like, Gecko, don't move. Cause I was going to jump off the wall for a slide. We we were the, we were like the first line of defense. Like right when you come to ghost town, we're under the sign. Yeah. Antho, Antho, Merrick, me, whoever, you know what I mean? First impression, like he was just smashing people. But those are examples of characters that existed that people took and like made their own. And they'll, they'll continue after they're gone. If Chris leaves, they're probably going to give that face to someone else. And it is what it is. And then there's people with original characters and I don't speak on behalf of all of them. I don't know how anybody else would feel about it, but yeah, I just can't. It's part of you. Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't see. It's not that I couldn't see someone else doing it. I'm sure someone would do it. That's like, better. Your, that's like your moon Knight costume, buddy. 
<laughs> it's like they they'd probably do it better than me in a different way. Like they'll they'll they would make it their own, I'm sure, because everybody has different ideas for what that character is. I'm I, that's I I can only do death the way that I do it. Somebody else might look at it and go perceive it completely differently and try to do it some different way. But if they're asking me, and if it's up to me, and it is to my knowledge, then nah, probably not. I don't know. Me and Pasta talked about it. She's like, I promise I won't let anybody do your character. I was like, I don't want anybody to be my character. <laughs> Done. Retired. It's like a freaking, it's like a, a number in like sports or something. When they retire a number for somebody. That, 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 that's yeah, it's like old Magic the Gathering cards. It's yeah. like, uh, it's retired. Oh, my Swamp Thing. My Swamp Thing just launched itself off my shelf. It's not Swamp Thing. It's haunted. It probably is. Constantine. I gotta keep an eye on my phone. But. Okay. There we go. What about okay? So the I think the biggest shocker for a lot of people this year, for you at least, is the announcement of your retirement. Um, which honestly, congratulations, good for you. It's much well deserved. Uh, you are off starting uh, a family and everything now. So I mean, good for you, buddy. Uh, congratulations. You had a fucking phenomenal many years of service at Not Scary Farm, man, and it won't go Thank unforgotten. You. Um. But talk to me about the decision of, of how that was made. Was that was that was that always the plan going in, or was it midway through the season, or how how did that go this this year for for that to to be your final year? Uh, no, I had my so it's just a, it's just a it's circumstantial because I mean at the core, at my core, I don't want to retire. Yeah. I, I I I always end every season going like oh, I could have done that better, or feeling like I have more I could do, mm -hmm. but uh. I had my first child, my first year is death. And then uh, I met my now wife. Um, I don't know, like within a couple of years of that. And then I'm about to have my fourth child any minute now. I mean, Megan can go into labor. Wouldn't that be right something now. over this podcast, right? That'd be. Awesome. I mean, it's <laughs> it's entirely probable her due date is tomorrow, and she's oh, a freak. Wow. She had our last two kids; she had on her due date, which is like unheard of. Um, so it's really just. I have a. You know, I have a family, and I just it's, haunt is fun, and I always told myself I would keep working there as long as it was fun, but I just have a. Uh, other things I have to more important things I have to worry about. Oh yeah. Family. Oh, there for wasn't sure. for sure. It's like, you know, if circumstances ever permitted it, it's, it wouldn't be off the table to come back. Um, but for now, no, it's just, I knew that I was going to have my fourth child and it's just, it wouldn't be realistic to like to, to travel out of state and like have four kids here with my, my fucking poor goddamn wife, just being like, <laughs> like, it's just like, even if she's willing to do it, it's just like, not fair. Yeah. Like I, I, I got to have selfish fun for half of my life. And I just gotta, I just gotta, <laughs> it's time. Just to gotta just, put it, just gotta, gotta put it, it down up now, huh? Yeah, I mean, listen, dude, like I said, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, for everything that you've put to, I, I felt that like your retirement, I, I pretty much figured that was the case. I was like, he's retiring because now he's starting, he's on his way with his fourth child. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and you're right. You were driving back and forth, you know, different states every freaking weekend. And it was it was nuts to hear that. I've heard some insane haunt schedules, but none were as committed as to what I seen you do. And not only, I mean, how long, how long were you doing that for? The last three or four years, three or four years, huh? Cause it, yeah. it, it, it was, it was, yeah. And not to mention this year, gas in California was not the cheapest. So, um, yeah, I would fill up here, fill up here at the Costco. And then I'd go down there and try to drive as <laughs> drive as little as possible. Yeah, it just it's like a selfish endeavor. Like I went, I like I I didn't want to let go of it, and I held on to it for as long as I could. But it just wasn't a realistic 
it just like not a realistic expectation anymore. Like, and I'm always going to choose my family. Oh yeah. hundred percent. So it's like, no matter what, like I, I, in my head, I, if it were convenient or if we still lived there or if it were down the street or if it wasn't a big deal, I would probably continue to do it for another 10 years, but it just, it's just not in the cards. And there's always going to be a piece of me that like, you know, wishes I was there, but it's just, it's fuck man. It is what it is. Like, I feel like I got pretty, pretty lucky like it's shocking to me that there are people that are like 20 something year or 30 something year vets now we have a couple of those right. and god bless them but yeah i remember hearing people being like yeah i did a full shift at disney today and then i came and worked here i was like that's fucking insane why would you do that and then <laughs> here i am driving it's not like i was driving there every day but yeah just driving there every week it's just like yeah i guess it's just sort of like uh i re- it just kind of telling how 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 much people love this job. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, there's like for sure nine to fivers, but yeah, I was like, I'd wake up, take off. And I, and on the day that I was driving into town, it was always on Thursday. So I wake up, drive straight to my, my best friend's house who lives a block away, put in my contacts, do my hair and then go clock in. And then and that for was like Thursday. Three, yep. So I'd like clock in after like a drive. And then I didn't drive home Sunday night, but I would go to sleep and then drive home mor- Monday morning. Well, at least you got a little rest in you to, I mean, that's, yeah. that's always important. It's not like working. It's not like working haunt in your twenties. Like when I lived in orange County down the street. So you're like staying up till fucking five or 6 AM. Cause you're going to some dumb after haunt event. Like <laughs> let's go hang out at fucking Del Taco till 5 AM. <laughs> not realistic. Hi, buddy. Can you go out there? Talk okay. But I can't have you do that, buddy. <laughs> I put so many sauces. <laughs> He's got salami. Ah, oh, that's the best sauce. stuff ever. Okay, yeah. go out there. <laughs> he said, I got so much salami. <laughs> so anyway. Family life. One of, one of four. Um, Not but yeah, but I, I mean, it's- in, in, haunt, haunt your 20s is like every, everybody's like, it's so funny that like we all live in the same city or the same state and everybody was like desperately trying to hang out as long as humanly possible. I was like, I can't believe I stayed up to like 6 AM drinking soda and just like dicking around in parking lots with my friends when I could have just went home and slept. <laughs> yeah, for real. It's like, you, like you said, they're all in the same city. You guys could probably hang year round, but it, it's just something about haunt. I don't know what it is. It's, it's a so, vibe. It's a vibe, man. It is. It's like, a vibe. It really is. Like for the same reason that there are, podcast and art and it's again it's like nothing you could ever explain to someone outside of the outside of the community it mm-hmm. must seem fucking insane i'm sure the, the first time i told my wife that this was like like when we were first seeing each other she was like what <laughs> like it probably seemed insane but yeah it's just it's a thing so um now that you're kind of okay so like everything's kind of said and done with with haunt realm so does that mean like uh obviously more time with the family but you also have your your business does that mean going full force into that now i mean you always do that year round regardless but like now you have those two months that aren't going to keep you from like stopping or anything is that just going full force into that now well this fucking this runs i mean i had to leave this season early i got crazy sick then i was sick for like three or four i mean we're some of us are still sick right like it's, it's nothing I could have expected. Like it, I had to stop doing everything rotten because my wife is crazy pregnant. Right. All our kids are sick and I had to like focus on that 100%. So I'm still like shipping stuff from the beginning of October. But, uh, I mean, I always try to go full force into my business, but after the pandemic, everything's been so gnarly. Yeah. Like it just, I feel like I'm just, pl- it feels like when I first started doing it like 10 years ago, I'm just playing catch up, but, um, the plan now, uh, excuse me. Hell yeah. (laughs) The plan now is to do uh, a lot of multimedia stuff. So, um, I'm still going to be doing t-shirts, but I don't want to feel like I'm just make, like I'm only posting on my page just to be like, hi, here's a new design. Bye. (laughs) Like, uh, I have an interview series coming out where, I won't necessarily be doing, I'll be doing some of the interviews in person, like when we're at conventions and stuff, but I'll, I'll have more digital content because the objective was always to sort of like, you know, if all my stuff is based on comic books and music, I didn't want to just only be offering like t-shirts. Yeah. I wanted to be 
communicating with people about comic books and music. So I'm going to be doing book club. I'm going to be bringing book club back, which was the thing that I started doing during the pandemic, but it was always, it was like, like a raw thing. Like I was just in my office on Instagram live talking about books. This will be like a more controlled format. Like there will be, it'll be episodical. Um, and then I'll have like an interview series coming out and then I'll, I have another, so it's going to be like three video projects all on the same channel. Hell yeah. Uh, I'll probably be streaming on Twitch. I suck at gaming, but I'm entertaining at talking. I'm good at talking shit. That's all that matters. So, <laughs> That's all that matters. Yeah. So I'll, I'll probably be doing a couple of gaming streams and then um, one or two haunt related ones a month like specifically targeted towards the haunt community, just talking about haunt shit. Hell yeah, man. Uh, and that'll be every, every month. So once it starts rolling, there'll be a few videos a month. Hell yeah, man. That's going to be dope, but, dude. And I'll still be making t-shirts, but I'll hopefully be able to make significantly less because the amount of designs that I've put out in nine years is psychotic. <laughs> just because Instagram sucks and you're just trying to constantly keep people's attention. So I'm like, Hey, here's a new design every two weeks for nine years. Like, <laughs> like I could, I could have paced myself. A Badass long time designs. Ago. I'll give them that. They're very, they're all good design. Really good. Designs. I appreciate that. I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of very talented friends now, so I don't have to do a lot of the legwork anymore. Hey, you I just come up with some work. Of, thank you. Awesome stuff right there, man. I, 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 I actually, I, I, yeah, I can't talk tonight. I see these designs all the time on Instagram, and I'm just like blown away by them because it's like literally shit that I would wear. It would be like it's that comic well, meets music. You know what I mean? I have no shortage of ideas. Like, I know. I mean, this is <laughs> or, why. Like, I don't know why I'm always nervous talking to you when I when I'm going to talk to you. I'm like, this is going to be me in like a, a, a few more years. Like when I'm growing up having my family, this is going to be me, and I'm I'm okay with that. That's what I, I've always wanted to carve out. Uh, like a a space for myself like so my house is very like it looks like a homeschool it's very muted tones it's a very cute family house right and then my office is just fucking like paradise like it, yeah it looks like we're it looks like my office yeah i mean you've, like seen, you've seen you've seen where i work I'm i know i love it i know i mean my and you literally your words exactly you're like this is like a mini version of frankincense <laughs> Yeah, I I just want my I want a gigantic bookshelf. I have to hang up a bunch of shit still. I feel like it's a it'll it's like a never ending uh it's like the Winchester Mystery House. Like Sarah Winchester had it's to constantly keep, <laughs> she, had, she had to keep building or like the ghosts would like the spirits would take her. Like I feel like I'll hang one thing every week or so. <laughs> Otherwise the demons will eat me. Or... I mean they already started an attack when they when they knocked down your swamp thing statue. Dude, I know my little pile of Kenner Swamp Thing toys. Yeah, like there, he's already trying to. He's already, he's already. That's already freaking raging war right there, buddy. They're haunted, exactly. my poor guys. Exactly. <laughs> Man, um, what was it like for you this this overall this season though? Did you have a lot of fun this season? Did you have any fun this season? I did. I think that maybe it's just like a symptom of working at a a seasonal job. Is like you always feel like. By the time it's over, you're always like, oh, but it was just getting to the good part. Like I was getting ready to do this. You know, I think it was probably um, uh, probably good that I didn't get to work my final week because I had a lot of mischief <laughs> left in me. And it was always like, oh, the, the last week I'm going to do this and the last week I'm going to do that. And then I didn't get to work the last week. And I was like, I didn't get to attach this to you, though. Uh, I had a GoPro on me one time. Yeah. Yeah. Like the GoPro guys, came, like the people that from GoPro came because John Cook had a relationship with them and they're like, will you wear this and go scare? I'm like, yeah, but it was like here. Mm -hmm. And I go, honestly, the only way for a GoPro or any camera to work and get you the footage that you want, it would have to be here. Yeah. Because if I'm taking slides or crawling around on the ground, all you're going to see is a lot of pavement. Or like if people are hunched over in character, like the only way to do it is like you would have to put on like Google glasses. Yeah. So you'd have or like have some POV like, or whatever. You would have to have some like Batman like context. Like, yeah. Yep. For you to really see like the insane shit that goes down, like that's the only way that would make it work. So unfortunately, one of those do not exist yet, but the other do. <laughs> I know. And it's good. I probably would have got fired instead of being able to leave on my own recognizance if I worked the last week. 
They're like, yeah, Mike's like, my- we got to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have my boardwalk costume sitting in my haunt box. Really? <laughs> wow. I was going to climb the windmill, too. I would love to have seen it, though. Would have been great footage. Would have been great footage. Then again, maybe I wasn't. Who knows? Hey, the world may never know now, right? I got to climb some things. Oh, I, I, I would. One of the greatest quotes I've ever heard you say, um, and I might butcher this, so forgive me if I do. Butcher my quote. Um, it was something about, oh, what, what was it again? It was about boundaries, about always pushing boundaries and maybe always pushing them just a little bit further and then some more. Like, someone told me that you, you said something, and, and probably in those, probably not those exact words, but in that. Yes. Sense. Well, I had, I had different, before, when I was in Boardwalk, it was kind of like, they said, don't chase people, don't go across the tracks. And I was like, well, maybe go across the tracks if you're chasing someone. Yeah. Like, if it's, if it's for the good of the scare, I think it's acceptable. Like, you know. And then it was just kind of like, by the end of like, my haunt tenure, it was kind of like rule. These rules are arbitrary. Look, I get, (laughs) dude, I get why they exist, but some of them just feel like rules for the sake of rules. For real. And it's just, I mean, you guys, I mean, I would hear stories of how big ghost town used to be and things that you can't go to now. Dude, it's like carnival carnival used to go from the Fiesta tracks to the Western tracks to the Calico tracks. I remember that. We had the biggest goddamn zone. It was crazy. I I feel bad for the middle management. So there's middle management. What I mean by that is people like Pasta or Brandon or 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 John Asprin or like people like Josh Mickelson. Like they are our bosses, but they are still middle management. Yeah. They're sort of like the finger in the dam holding back the flood of the paper pushing management. Right. And I'm not going to name names, but these are people that kind of don't spend any time in the park making decisions for the park. <laughs> so I mean, fuck it. I don't work there, right? Yeah, so hey. look, there are people that make decisions and it just feels like maybe they should spend more time around the operations of haunt. And I don't mean walking through and watching rope drop or spending five minutes watching some thing. I mean like boots on the ground, being there, seeing how guests are reacting to new policies, Basically spending time around doing surveys and stuff to see how every, yeah. Yeah. Like be, being around it before they make some of these decisions that they make. And then those decisions are carried out by people like pasta and Brandon and all them. And it's like, they're going to, they get a lot of heat for like, you know, monster. And it's not like monsters are giving them shit, but being like, why is this like this? And it's like, dude, they're just, you know, they're trying to manage us while also trying to disseminate information from people that are making doo doo decisions. Like for the park, I, f- I feel bad. They probably, they have the hardest job. Because they have to like they have to enforce those keep policies, the, keep, even though it's not their policies they want to enforce. Yeah, they got to keep the morale up, or you know, they're coming up with ideas that might be good just for someone behind a desk to be like, "I don't like it." And it's like, dude, fucking what? How do you even know if it's gonna work if you don't even know what we're? You know what I mean? It's like because uh, you don't like it, I mean, it's not gonna work. I mean, that's been the uphill battle ever since I started. Like every year, there's some new rule or some new person gets hired into some new role and they come in with like something to prove. And it's just like, dude, not uh, uh, scary farm is how, used, used to be how the park made all their money. Yeah. And they just kind of messed with it. And it was just like, well, why would you mess with your breadwinner? Just let it be scary farm. Like I get just all these policies that sort of shoot it in the foot and it, and they kind of, it feels almost like from, this is all my perspective, obviously, but it felt like, man, they just, they didn't care because why boys and uh, what is it like the boys festival and the Christmas stuff that all makes them more money now than scary farm. Yeah. Which is unheard of. Yeah. Like, you know, scary farm is how they used to keep the lights on in that park. Yeah. We now still got, make more. Yeah. Now they got all, I mean, you got to imagine that people 
Christmas fanatics out there. We got, you know, totally. And you got and Ghost Town got, things like Ghost Town Alive are are awesome. Yeah. But I never thought I would be going backstage and being like, Boysenberry Festival makes more money than Scary Farm. That's fucking crazy. I didn't even know that many people liked boysenberry flavored stuff. It's it's insane because yeah, I, I I mean they they throw this festival on every year. They have you know a select few. I guess also it depends too on who you're trying to target sell that audience to, and you're yeah gonna for more, sure. And, and your job as a theme park is to try to sell to everybody. Yeah, and, to, to make as much money as humanly possible. But look, man, when I started working there, we'd have Tuesday nights, and and when I worked in mazes, we weren't getting out of those mazes until like three something, and you know sometimes like three in the morning. Yeah. Because it was sold out. And I don't mean like sold out what they say is sold out now, which is just not quite what it used to sell out at. Uh, excuse me. But dude, we used to have like legit sold out nights. And then we would work two, sometimes Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Like we would work four, sometimes five days a week. And the mazes were packed out. And we'd have like upper, like above 30,000 nights and i don't think we had a night over thirty thousand this whole season well you brought up a a specific word as you were talking and that was policies yeah chaperone Uh, policy was the one that killed your the worst policy and i don't feel bad throwing i'm not violating my nda what i will say is there were a lot of talent that supported that policy there were people that were like good i i hate those teenagers i was like you're a street monster fucking who cares the bring me it's what does it say on the statue of liberty or like i can't remember bring, bring me, me your, liberty or bring me death no it was like bring me your poor you're tired you're hungry you're sick uh, like i can't remember i'm fucking i don't know enough about american history it doesn't matter <laughs> I barely, um, we barely passed that in high school we'll move on. yeah it was just like bring me your poor you're tired you're hungry you're sick something like that i uh, my version of that is like bring me your rude your your shitty your do you like who bring bring me all your abrasive guests and i realize that i'm coming from a place of privilege because i'm a big guy and i can handle myself yeah there are other talent that are not as confrontational as i may or may not be but man that teenagers just don't even check that box of like ooh like t- teenagers are going to teenage yeah We were all teenagers. I remember walking around thinking that everything I said was the most unique, funny thing or like clever idea. But what these teenagers don't know is like if a kid comes up to me and he talks about whatever is cool or trendy, he makes some joke. He calls me Skull Trooper from Fortnite or he tells me to do some dance that's popular on TikTok. In his head, his teenage brain, he thinks he's the first person that's ever said it to me. Yeah. What he doesn't know is he's going to fuck right off. Five minutes later, there's going to be another group of teenagers and they're going to tell me the exact same thing verbatim but teenagers don't know that and they should be allowed to be annoying they're they're not adults their brains are still jelly they're just doing teenage shit they came to the park that w- some so many monsters have this there's a lot of monsters that maybe have this sense of entitlement that's just like get out of my park i'm like dude they're still paying customers this is probably their night away from home to come act like little douchebags so scare them. And if you can't scare them, entertain them. And if you can't entertain them, get them to fuck off. That's like, a new it's, one. It's, I like that one better. It's no, I, I, when I was in boardwalk, I used to tell everybody, I was like, if you can't scare them, elicit an emotional response. I don't care if it's anger or laughter, because if you hate me, you're going to think about me until the next thing that keeps your mind off of me. So if I piss you off, you and your friends are going to be waiting an hour for whatever maze you're waiting in, in that whole hour, you're going to be thinking about how I embarrassed you in front of your people. You tried to say something witty to me and I smoked you and I made you look like a little wiener. And now I'm living in your head rent free until you have a, a delicious treat or you go through a maze and experience something different. I'm going to be living in your head. I just have to, like, I just have to reiterate that you called someone a little wiener. Yeah, they're they're all. Uh, they're, I've called people worse. It's, but it's hilarious to me because it was just I don't know. It was just common. Yeah, all you little teenage penis people, whatever. <laughs> um, like, uh, you know, you, when you're a kid, you always remember things that embarrassed you or upset yeah. you, or when you got bullied. Like that shit stays with you. Good. I'm here to leave a lasting impression. If you don't respect my work as a character, and if you're not a fan, or if I didn't scare you, then I'm gonna either 
and if I, and if I can't entertain you, I'm going to make you hate me. I don't care if that's uh, upsetting your religious preferences or hurting you deep in your heart. You're going to remember me. And I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't, how many, how, I was, about how many people a night would you say you would piss off? Most people were scared of me or like, you know, they came and they played the game, but like, yeah, if you're going to be like a little dirtbag teenager, I don't know. I don't keep count, but it feels good. Like you, <laughs> now I, this is also going to be probably a little hard for you to remember, but what do you, do you remember ha- having like a favorite one that you were just like, Oh dude, I'm never going to forget that one. Um, I don't, I'm not, uh, there's a few like standout, like it, encounters that I had most of them were always in good fun because I think when people realized that I can't be intimidated or that I wasn't going to go anywhere they were willing to play the game and they were willing to be scared or be entertained right and like they were like it was always in good fun there were people and I don't really tell I don't tell on people I'll never have anyone kicked out right. unless uh, I feel like they're a direct threat to other talent they're not going to be a threat to me I don't give a shit I don't play that mm-hmm but if I feel like they're going to be a, a safety risk for someone else, there was a time where these kids were like talking hard shit and I called them out. Like, I was like, you know, <laughs> I pulled their card. I was like, what's up? And then security came and then they were like, this guy was, you know, this guy was being mean to us. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I just did what they did. I lied. I was like, I have no idea what they're talking about, but they're over there touching talent and stuff like that. So they got in trouble and they were getting kicked out. And that was security's decision. Cause I felt like they were going to go, they were on their way to Calico, like across Calico tracks. They were going to carnival. I was like, my concern was that they were going to do it to someone else. Yeah. So those guys were getting kicked out and it turns out there were three, there were three of them and they were brothers. And I guess they were all on probation. Oh, and so Buena Park PD was escorting them out. And since they knew that they had to contact their probation officer, I've been on probation. I totally get it. <laughs> they started fist fighting each other. Cause now they're like, you see, you were fucking with people. Now you're getting us kicked out. And they just started scrapping because they knew they were going to go to juvenile hall anyway. <laughs> I was like, this escalated. Um, <laughs> Dude, that's fucking nuts. They were fighting like inside the park. Yeah, they were fighting. They were like, like kicking each other's asses. And I was just like laughing. I was like, you see, you could have just came here and been nice. Yeah. Now you're you know going back mean? to fucking juvie. But um, I've had the, there's a picture of me and this tiny little old lady. Um. She's a little old lady and she was in a scooter and she was very old because I used to have an inside joke with myself, I guess. Like most, some people that were close to me knew that I would go up to really old people more or less as death and just be like, are you ready? Like, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? like <laughs> maybe they didn't get what I was asking, but I was like, all right, time to go now. Like, <laughs> too goddamn old, let's go. Like, <laughs> but she was just like, somebody's, you know, I will eat like, you're just like somebody's tutu. Abuelita. Sitting there, yeah, so like I might, or I call in Hawaiian, we say tutu. Okay, but she's just sitting there by herself. I don't know where her fucking family was, but she was like by guest services. And I crouched down and I'm like talking to her, and she's just like, Oh no, like, and there's a picture that someone had got of her where she's like this, and then she like realizes she's being filmed. <laughs> um, anybody that's ever been like ag- aggressively religious towards me, I've always kind of like left them jaw agape because i will i don't really talk much but if i do it's always say to say something like unusually cruel or asinine at someone but you know people will tell me things that like they're gonna pray for me and i'm staying in character like if if my character's death and i've been around since the beginning of all things i just you know say some things they don't want to hear about jesus or like <laughs> like this the, this season me and red were scaring someone and this guy goes jesus christ and then uh red kind of give me her like her look her blank stare and i go ah jesus i remember him the last time i saw him he was hanging from a toothpick crying for his daddy <laughs> it's like or like <clears throat> somebody some other time someone said they were going to pray for me and i was just like you know, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for you. Like power of Jesus. No, 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 no. And I was like, yeah, I was there when he died. It wasn't that impressive. <laughs> like, he just like, just mean things like that. Or someone like 
praying to God for help. And we would, you know, remember like 30 days of I was night. Gonna, I was going to bring that up right now. I'm like, please tell me you got to do that at least. That more or less. We didn't say, I didn't say the exact quote, but we would just kind of be like, it, whoever I was with or me, I would just be like, it was me and Angie. So Angie's speaking in Greek in her nun character. Right. And people fucking hate that. And then they would say something about God. And I was just kind of like, like, he's not there. <laughs> Or uh, we had this guy, Ahmad, that worked there. Um, Ahmad. Ahmad, my, fr- my friend Andrew was Lebanese. Ahmad wasn't Lebanese, but he, spe- he spoke like Arabic. He spoke Farsi and all that stuff. So uh, there was this Arabic family. or the, um, Sorry, not Arabic family. I don't know where they were from, but they were speaking Farsi. And so I don't know what they were saying, but they were like terrified of me. Yeah. And then Ahmad comes up and he sp- starts speaking Farsi back to them. And it's just like, oh, no, 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 no. And now they're really scared. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, just, you know, pl- hamming it up for it. And they finally like go running away. And I'm like, dude, what did you say to them? And he's like, oh, man, I just told them that you were going to like kill their children and like drink their blood, stuff like that. And I was like, <laughs> I was All like, right. Oh. I was like, yeah. That set the tone right there. I don't know. I, there's just, Guest interactions, like, they're not always memorable. They're always fun. I've had good scares with people like Virus and Merrick and, and Morty. Running with Merrick and Morty, they're like some of my favorite like times. It's always like the end of the night, you know, because Merrick's always on his own. Morty's always doing his own thing. But, you know, towards the end of the night, the last couple hours, I would run with those dudes. And it was like someone called me and Morty the uh, Settler and Waldorf, like goth Settler and Waldorf. Like the old grumpy guys from the Muppets. Yeah. Because they're like two old goth guys just talking shit to people. (laughs) Like some, you know, Morty would make some obscure goth reference that nobody would get. And I would just like punctuate it by being terrifying or like, or me and Merrick just like bulldozing people or just me and Red and Tamar just like running around, running around being creepy. I got to see you guys a couple times. It was actually really cool. I mean, I I was so happy that Tamar came back because she was the angel of death. My second year is death. And that was pre red. And I running together. So the three of us being able to run together was fucking was sick. I loved it. You know what I'm a little sad about is now that you're retired, I can't get a picture with you in character. Dude. Uh, like me and, you know, Jen, um, she, Jen from Goring, she was the, uh, I want the light Sis- sister god dude she's so goddamn good yeah i remember when i started working there jen was a po- uh a, a possum in cs she would like run from bush to bush and knock over trash cans and stuff like that but um i remember the last day i was there too she's like god, we got to get a picture next week before you leave and that, like me and chopper like a bunch of people were like yeah we'll get our, our picture on the last week and i was like whoop sorry <laughs> you did a michael scott yeah i didn't mean to but yeah, okay. that that's funny too because my last night there sucked. Really? Yeah, it was like the worst. It was ironically like the worst night of the season I had had. And how do you like? And how do you feel going out like UK just kind of stepping away like that, or is it like? No, you're like, you're like the Undertaker. Want you're like the Undertaker. You want to just keep coming back for one more. I one know, more. but I don't ever want to be like the Undertaker. Where yeah, it's just right. Like, All right, motherfucker, we get it. Like Spaz did that. It's a WrestleMania times. season, come out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's Spaz. I remember Spaz did that. He's like, I'm retired, and then he'd be like, Surprise, dude, it came back. And I felt like he did that like three years in a row. I'm like, I don't ever want to. I don't want to overstay my welcome. Like, but yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm like, well, maybe just you know, <laughs> maybe just one more. I could end someone's really- like, someone asked me, they're like, would you ever just come scare for a night? I was like, dude, I don't want to do that shit. Like, there's a there's haunted attractions here. It's ironic because I had emailed them. Uh, what do we, we have? Like Fear Farm here or something? Fear and farm, I sent yeah. them like, send a headshot of your character. No, 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 no. And they never emailed me back. <laughs> I was like. Thanks. Sorry, for nothing. Appreciate it. <laughs> Hope you motherfuckers see this. <laughs> now there's a few. There's a few like little haunts out there. I know they're both. I think they're both run by 13th floor. But yeah, because they have the they have the 13th floor one, and then they have Fear Farm. Fear Farm. Which yeah, I think they move locations. They're not in the same location they were in 2020. No, so I, went I have 2020. no idea. I've never been to. I went to the Fear Farm Christmas one, and I was just kind of like, uh. I don't know. It must have been a bad night. I was just like, this sucks. No, it was the same for me. It was, but but see, I had gone literally at the end of the run, like the final night, and it was like 
for the week after Halloween. So it was like November 5th or something like that. So like all the talent was already gone. Like there was only, yeah. And for the Christmas event, it was like, not that was like, not that many people there. I guess Halloween is just not as big out there that it is out here. I I think it is. I think um, my wife grew up going, she said she went to go to fear farm and she like told me about like her friend peeing herself there and like how it used to be like the, the, the scariest thing they'd ever gone to. I mean, they, they, from what I understand, it's like a big deal, but it's just so hard when you started at like objectively the biggest, you know what I mean? It's hard, it's hard, like hard to even imagine working anywhere else when you worked on like, you know, it would be like if you started in WWE and then you're just like fucking it's like you're wrestling. doing, yeah, you're doing like bar. Yep. You know what I mean? Which it's still fun. And there are still fans and it's no, not to discredit those events. I would, I would work at any of them. It's just like, you know, the feeling of like doing a fucking rope drop and crawling through like a couple hundred people to get to the front gate. And like, it's just, it's not the same fog alley, you know, the streets of ghost town themselves, you know, it's like, it's a whole, it's a whole, like you said, it's a whole vibe. It's yeah, this it's, it's, it would be hard. But, you know, I have friends that have retired from haunt and they work home haunts and stuff like that. And they're happy. It's it's probably nice to, like, scratch that itch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and we we might move. And ironically, if we move, we're, we're near a place that has a Cedar Fair Park. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, <what? laughs> no, <laughs> I would, I, you know, or maybe I'll, I'll 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 work nowhere and I'll experience just haunt. what fans fans experience and yeah. just get to go to a bunch of different events. So that's my next question for you. Uh, now that you're, you're, you know, you're retired and stuff, are you going to come out for the 50th just to visit as a guest a couple, like at least a weekend or something? Yeah. If I have time, I mean, I would love to, Yeah. if I have time, um, I mean, we have a whole year. So I mean, yeah, a lot could happen between now and when that happens, but would that ideally yeah. be the plan is to hopefully try to get out here for at least one weekend to come see the 50th. Yeah. I mean, I would, I'll always want to <clears throat> be at the event as often as I can, yeah. um, in any capacity. It's not because it's the 50th. I'm sure the 50th is going to be. Who knows? I don't have high hopes for it. What are you doing? Whoa. I see the like head you're eating your, You sound like you're eating your foot. <laughs> Stop. She's just like, sorry, dude. She's like, dude, I'm just trying to get comfortable over here. I know. I want to keep that dog. She seems like a good girl. Dude, she's so good. She does. She's like been quiet. I mean, you you say you're hearing something. I'm barely hearing something. So. Oh, she's like, oh. like trying to eat her foot. Like, <laughs> she's like I'm hungry. Dude, she's such a good girl. But yeah, I mean, obviously, I want to come out not because it's the 50th, just because I want to be near the event. I I don't really have a lot of high hopes for the 50th. Right now, uh, respectfully. One final question I have to ask because you did bring it up earlier, and I I always love the concept. Of this I actually know parents who are trying to do this with their own kid and i think it's going to be that'd be cool if they can if, if you know they make it that far and everything but you mentioned your son uh is he is he interested any of your kids do they have interest they know what dad does and everything well my oldest is nine. my oldest is nine right and he's like uh a theater kid okay he totally he yeah it, if anybody were gonna do it it would definitely probably be gunner like he's that that's like his wheelhouse. That I think that said, that's something. Well, I was gonna say that being said, would you ever come back to scare with him? Yeah, that would be great. There is we've had a lot of mother, daughter, father, son, uh Paris at knots. So yeah. that would be neat. It would be cool to see. Uh, we've, we've had it in Carnival, we've had it in Ghost Town and Camp. Yeah, there's been a lot of that. That would be neat. I don't know what I would do. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with for both of you, you two. I mean, it'd probably just let him do. I would let him do his own thing. I I wouldn't expect to come back eight years from now and be like, okay, guys, I'm gonna need to be in Ghost Town, and he's gonna need to be like, right? Yeah, it would be so cool to be able to scare with him, right? Or not at all. I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to be in charge of his experience let him have his own like how you pay for yeah because maybe he doesn't want to scare with me it's like that would be selfish to be like all right you're gonna work there when you're 18 and we're gonna work together like it right. 
it's got to be something he wants to do and I want him to do whatever he wants. Maybe he's, maybe he gets there and he's like, I don't give a shit. Like I want to go work in a maze or like, or I want to go be in, in whatever camp is when that time rolls around. Like maybe he doesn't want to do that at all. Or maybe he legitimately wants to try and do my character. I don't care. That would be. A long I'll way go to be go, a... man. I'm excited to see where that ends up. I'll go be the cast lead for ghost town and then he can be death. <laughs> <laughs> Then you're really dictating him right there. <laughs> that would be a twist if I if I came back, but it was in a management capacity. I think you could pull it off. I really do. I would like to do it. I think it would be fun. One year, right? We'll see. They, they pay more. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and you'll be wearing a suit instead of makeup and, and everything all night. So, Or at least something yeah, that'd be, nicer. That'd be kind of neat and boring. Yeah. It's like... I'd just be watching people scary and going... Just do one, you just wear the tuxedo shirt. It says, you know, I'm formal but I also like to party. <laughs> oh, no way, dude. I love when uh, cast leads dress up. Like I, I, I was going to say, man, if I have the opportunity to dress up, why I mean, not? You dressed up for some... like a 20 second zoom call, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> and it, it didn't even work, <laughs> but you still dressed up and it was, yeah. and it was, and I think that's the, the, the point of the matter is why you dressed up. And that was for yeah. the receival of your award. Yeah, they messaged me like the day before. They're like, hey, can you do a Zoom call? I go, for what? They're like, oh, you won Monster of the Year. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I'll, I'll chill about it. You're like, huh? You what now? <laughs> yeah, I don't even have my award yet. Ed's got it somewhere. <laughs> oh, they're going to mail it out to you? You're going to go out there and pick it up the next time you're out there? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't even talked to Ed since that night. Uh, I think uh, I'm excited to see where you go next, man. Um you you've accomplished a lot in the haunt world for yourself uh you're accomplishing a lot in life itself um and i'm excited to see where the next chapter of your life takes you um and I, i've been fortunate enough to get to talk to you outside of podcast uh on a personal level and stuff about things and um it's always great to talk to you man um you too you and i we have a mutual friend uh aaron uh who i dearly love it's my movie club buddy right there my sweet baby boy. Um, there it is, yeah. That, I, okay, yeah. that should be the last one. How was it to get out there and scare with him? Because I know he was very excited about it. Uh, he liked to, to to finally get to do that with you uh, in Ghost Town. So how was that for you guys? Dude, I felt – it felt – it's crazy because me and Aaron didn't run together. Right. Uh, not, it, not a single time. The same thing that me and Corey, our mutual best friend. I mean, my two best friends – two of my five best friends in the whole world – you know, two and a half of them were there. So, um, my old, my, my other best friend, Johnny, he was the slender man there and I was in ghost town with him, but it's ironic. Like we didn't run together, which I really like. Like, I think we all have an understanding that characters got to do their shit and you can't force things. Mm -hmm. It's like me and red, like me and red. I don't remember exactly how we decided to run together, but also red is like my fucking sister. Like, but it didn't start that way. Like our relationship was established through character shit or through knots. And now like we're, we're, we're like, she's one of my best friends, mm -hmm. but like, uh, I, this season was comforting. I don't know if that's the word, like Aaron's box is on this side of me. Corey's box is on this side of me. So it was just comforting that, to know that they were around during the break. Like even it, it even if we never ran together. So, cause you always think like, Oh, we're in the same zone. It's like, that doesn't necessarily mean people, we're going to run together, you know? Yeah. People shouldn't run together. Cause he had, a, you know, he had a brand new character and he was like working it out and yeah. Corey too. So yeah. I'm, I'm not going to like ruin their thing. Cause Aaron's thing was so perfect. Yeah. On its own. Like him just being this fucking silent evil fuck. Same thing with Corey, like shining his butcher knife. And like walking around like that, I would I would have never wanted to ruin their gimmick, but it was like it felt so good to be able to come backstage. And like even like it, you know, your best friends, you don't have to like announce your presence to each other. I just go, Corey and Sophia are here, Red and Aaron, Tamar is here with Sonia. Like every I'm just surrounded, I was surrounded with an incredible friend friend group and like support group backstage. Yeah. And, you know, it's an unspoken, like, love is an unspoken thing. Like, those are my fucking people. And it was so cool to spend my last season just, like, in this insulated little bubble. With, you, guys were, you had your own little circle, man. It was just kind yeah, of with, with I, we weren't, like, within the big group where backstage where everybody was. We were just, like, in our little 
pocket universe and it was fucking cool like as robert de niro best put it the circle of trust faka yeah <laughs> even morty morty was like right across the way so it was like nice just to let me fucking merrick like everybody that i really like working with was just in that area that's perfect yeah i mean i, yeah, I would so. say at least behind the scenes you know i mean you i mean you saying you had a pretty bad last night but behind the scenes throughout the season and that was cool that you got to be surrounded with people that loved you and you love them back you know what i mean and yeah, dude, it feels like home. Like, you know, usually I've, I've worked whole seasons where it was just like me doing my own thing, but it was nice to like spend my last season just like in a support, like I had like a support group. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. But I mean, I, I, like I said, dude, I appreciate, I mean, I've only got to see ghost town death or ghost town. Mike, I never got to see boardwalk. Mike, there's probably videos out there that are surfacing that. that are I don't think there is. I've looked, for, I've looked really? for videos. Really? No, nah, man, I don't think there is. It's not as big I, as it is today, huh? Everybody, everyone picks up a camera today now. Yeah, and ironic, like I didn't really understand the power of social media back then. And back then, social media was only kind of like MySpace. Yeah. And if people were filming, I would always leave. Really? And now, in retrospect, I'm always like, fuck, man, I wish I had footage of it because Boardwalk Mike was a problem. It's it's just, it's it's amazing now because now everyone has their own set of everyone's capturing the world with their own eyes now it's like and everyone has pages youtube channels you know whatnot and then you're always trying to find the peaceful medium of like i made it a point this year to be like dude if i see a camera i will stop nice and try to like stick in the area because i always i mean you I gave me some good footage this year i got a footage of you just kind of chilling standing on top of one of the benches <laughs> Me and Saki had a joke that was like, she, she likes to say rare Pokemon. <laughs> it's like when you find characters that aren't normally on camera, it's like rare Pokemon. And it's ironic because she has more pictures of me than any other person. She's always great at taking pictures of me. But um, before I would avoid cameras, like I just was like, and then I, at the end of the season, I was always like, how come there's not pictures or videos of me? I'm like, oh, because every time someone would put a camera in my face, I was like, nope. <laughs> just, nope. i don't know i just kind of wanted to be you know i wanted there to be some mystique yeah like you don't catch ghosts on camera but you do get like a like you know you get like there's some evidence that they're there yeah but you don't always catch them on camera Less and then after a while <laughs> yeah but then after a while i was like all right i promise this fucking season i'll stop and make myself available i won't be i won't ham it up like some people do that like that just follow cameras around yeah like, I don't want to ruin the show, but I was like, man, I just, I want to be respectful and mindful of those people too. Right. hundred percent, dude. No, I mean, like I said, you've gotten out there. I, 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 you know, I haven't gotten footage of you in the past, like very many. And, and to get as much as I did this season, I was like, shit, this is, this, it is like a rare Pokemon. I was like, damn, I can't believe I'm actually getting footage of this guy right now. It's awesome. Now I have more pictures of me than I know what to do with from like I the know. last couple of years. I was like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> No, it's like a whole fucking collage of shit now, dude. I'm telling but you. like virtually, I have pictures of me and board. I have tons of pictures from Boardwalk, but nothing like. There's no video. Damn. I know. I I have whatever. It's all right. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, now to start the next chapter of your life, dude, and I'm excited to see where that goes, man. I I um, uh, I'm always a big supporter of what you do, and and appreciate what you do for not only the haunt community but for the, the geeks and the nerds like myself. Um. Reading comics and doing violence. Yeah. So, I mean, like Brody said in, in Mallrats, what, just because a guy reads some comics, he can't start some shit, you know? That's, That's a dude, motto that I the, live by. <laughs> most of the people that, most jujitsu and, and uh, MMA and Muay Thai practitioners I know are fucking nerds. Yeah. And I'm like, that's the wrong dude. Like, you're going to mess with that kid. He's just like, dude, do you think we you were know? reading Wolverine all these years just for the hell of it? Nah, bro. We were studying his fucking, we were starting his, <laughs> studying his fucking fight style. The, the jocks got to watch out, man. You might go poke fun at the kid in Naru the Naruto shirt now, and he's going to fucking guillotine you. For real, dude. No, it's nuts, man. But uh, I just want to, again, uh, on behalf of Knights of Horror, say thank you for everything that you brought to the table with Ghost Town when in your final years, man. And and uh, I was fortunate enough to get to see you uh, scare, because you scared last year too, and and it was it was cool cool to see you scare two years in a row, like after meeting you more and, and getting to know you. So um, I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate you coming back onto the show to talk about it and uh, to kind of finish us off for the final week of Scare Appreciation Month, man. I, Appreciate Dude, it thanks for fucking doing a scare actor appreciation month. Like, I'm not ready for Christmas yet, so you know, it's yeah, like we're like I know, but we're like we're we're just we're we're all schmucks. Yeah, 
we don't deserve uh, an eighth of the attention that we get. And we're so lucky to have fans or people that sort of like document this like subculture, like the, the haunt community wouldn't be jack shit if it weren't for people willing to take time out of their day to document it. Like if, even if you were the scariest motherfucker in the Midwest, if nobody's there to see it, like nobody's going to know you're not going to have, you know what I mean? Like, we just kind of wouldn't be shit without the people that were there trying to impress or like entertain. So thanks for doing a scare actor appreciation month or doing podcasts or taking pictures or any of that shit that that's so invaluable. Like this, this community, we wouldn't have repeat. We wouldn't have people like camping out to be monsters or even knowing about us outside of word of mouth. If it weren't for people like documenting the events. So thank you. Like that's insane. It's my pleasure, dude. I just have fun doing it. And I mean, much like I think a lot of us in life, thousands of dollars spent, a lot of debt to pay, but you know, I'm living happy. Can't complain. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's like, you know, we, we, my dad always told me this. If, if you, you work your entire, you know, you work your entire month or however many weeks or whatnot and you get your paycheck and you don't spend a little bit on yourself then you're really working for nothing because sometimes it's more than a little bit. Hey, you got to treat yourself. You got to do it. I mean, if I ever come, if I ever come out to Arizona again, which I'm planning on to in February, um, I might have to stop by to look at that collection. I need more shelves and I need more books. And then we need to take a trip to Ikea. <laughs> yeah. It's I think it's about time. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to have work to do. Might have to knock down a wall. There you go. If I can just make one big ass <laughs> room, why, why not? Right? You know, might as well. Um, but uh, Mike, for all those who are um, want to keep up with you or follow the store or follow your character, where can they find you on Instagram, my friend? Um, my personal account isn't really all that personal. It's mostly just stuff with my family or whatever books I'm reading or about Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu. That's a uh, at crooked X teeth on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my store is at rotten R O T N six one six. And then uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the death account. I think I'm going to try to mix it up a little, you know, it's no longer a character account. Uh, I might use it f for other stuff. Um, I'm working on it. I will see. That's a, what is it? GTS X death? I believe so. Let's see. I don't know. I never know. I mean, with a lot of, a lot of the things coming your way pretty soon. I mean, safe to say, I mean, it's all right. GTS X death. Yeah. Uh, if you're following rotten, um, it's ROTN616 on Instagram and on Twitch. And then I'm going to be setting up my YouTube channel, which will branch out to all the interview series that are coming up. Um, if you're a fan of MMA, if you're a fan of comic books or music or wrestling, I will have people on there for all of you. Hell yeah. And then uh, I'll be around. You're around, bro. Hey. I'm around. We're all here. We're still alive, right? We're, we're still breathing. That's good. I'm around. <laughs> yeah, we're all here, man. Hey, uh, well, again, like I said, congratulations on a fantastic career. And congratulations because you might be birthing a child tonight. Yeah, I mean, within the week for sure. Within the week, yeah. I mean, congratulations on that, uh, welcoming a fourth child to the world um, and raising them to be the next generation of, of comic book geeks. Whatever they want to be. Comic book whatever geeks. They be. I'm hoping comic book geek is in there though, but whatever, whatever they, they want to be. be, I like that. Yeah, whatever they want them to be. But um, thank you so much for everything, and I appreciate you, man. Dude, thank you. Yep, yep. Uh, appreciate it. With all that being said, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification where every time we put up a new video, follow us on Twitter at Knights of Four, on uh, TikTok and Instagram at The Knights of Four. And if nothing else, uh, tune in tomorrow for the season finale of Character Appreciation Month with a very special guest. See you guys tomorrow. See you, bud.